boys and girls of all ages. Easy Leo! Remember, your channel is not for kids. So, hello ladies and gentlemen. Uh, how do I even start this video? Have you guys ever had a day, I'm sure that you probably have, have you ever had a day that you were just so stressed out that you just want to go out and fish and catch a fish and kind of forget about life? This is exactly how I'm feeling today, right? Which is why I really don't even feel like doing my usual intro, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't really fake the happiness of doing the regular intro. Now, if you don't really follow me on Instagram, which you should, go there and give it a follow. If you do follow me on Instagram and you watch the daily stories, you know that recently I have been through all different sorts of bureaucratic stuff, you know? I've been going to the city, uh, running some errands here and there, and you know, going to those government agencies just makes your head like explode, you know what I'm saying? So there's no major plot in this video. I just felt like I had to come out here and do some fishing and de-stress. If you were expecting me to almost die in this video, I'm starting to tell you that it's not going to happen. If you expected me to just go to Walmart, spend $10 and just go out and fish, I'm sorry. That's not going to happen. I'm not going to call the cops. I'm not going to find a firearm. I'm not going to fish in a tunnel, right? All that I'm going to do really is I got some wax worms with me right over here. I'm going to go over there. Yes, you heard me right. Over there. And I just want to catch whatever bites. That's it. This is the plan for today. So let's head over there and uh, just lay some fish on this beautiful fall day. One thing that you guys definitely need to take into consideration is that since the last video on the YouTube channel, water temperature around this area actually dropped by a lot. So last video water temperature was 50, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, the water temperature in this little creek right here is a 40 to 43 degrees Fahrenheit. And it is around this time of the year when water temperature drops a lot and winter comes that I really like to use live bait instead of lures. There are many benefits in using live bait instead of lures once fish get more lethargic, right? One of them is that it gives you a more natural presentation entices the fish to bite your stuff better and this is kind of benefit for the fish you know i mean at least you are not using lures and plastics so that when the fish bites your stuff sometimes they take the bait you are at least feeding some of them down there right so this is where i'm going to set up i'm going to set up right next here to the bridge and uh, the sign that shows my my enemies fish eating birds right they should change that to bothering extreme full of fishing birds you know i'm gonna set up my stuff over here we got a wonderful piece of new structure as you guys can see this was not over here before when i fished this place previously so i think we're going to catch some amazing fish in this little hole there are no secrets out here today as a matter of fact I'm going to be using a very simple setup, okay? Just a little Kinders Outdoors ice fishing jig that I'm going to put under a float. So let me see. I think I'm going to give it maybe this much liter to begin. And I'm just going to tip it with a little wax worm and cast it out there for whatever is available to bite, right? Realistic fishing style in a certain sense. Tip it with one little wax worm. There we have it, huh? And we're going to feed this fish good today because these wax worms right here are buttery, juicy, and perfect bait for fall fishing. Look at that. Oh, man. Look how juicy that is. Okay, let's give it a cast. I'm sure that some of you caught up on the reference in the intro that uh, that this is pretty much an Uncle Steve <laughs> style video. That's why I said hello boys and girls of all ages. That was my first cast and check it out. First cast, 
first fish of the day bluegill took the mealworm 100 percent and you know this is what it is about look at that this is what it is about this one even comes with a little red dot here for some for some reason oh yes leo go down in the mud bluegill are actually starting to show up their winter colors around my area you see this purplish right here on top of the fish beautiful patterns right just gently release it over here kind of put this a little bit away so that i can release fish better later in this video you know Dude, that's what's up sometimes this is what this is all about oh look at that dude instant hit instant hit just come out back to my roots and look at that second species of the day let's put in the photo tank that is what's up if you guys watch the youtube channel you guys know what this fish is right we got here a golden shiner the notemigonus chrysoleucus it is a species of fish that actually looks very similar to some European species of fish out there. I'm sure that my European subscribers can attest to that. Let me release it over here. Multi-species fishing going fairly well today, huh? Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, son. Back to the roots. bro what is up with this wax worm i mean you know they gave me a container full of wax worms some of them fresh some not so fresh this one has been dead for quite a while but it's all right the fish will take it they ain't that picky right right over there oh yeah oh yeah look at that dude they love it they love it Man, they took, I think they took it all. No, no kidding. Look at that. Look at that, man. Yo, bro, that half rotten mealworm gone. They are actually everywhere. Now I'm just kind of hoping, wishing if a giant is going to show up. Hopefully I'm going to catch a big one, man. There's got to be a big one down there. Yeah, look at that. Another golden shiner. Fascinating. The ecosystem over here is just so rich that look at that another beautiful golden shiner notemigonus chrysoleucus man just like that oh no get out of there no blunder 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 that is bound to happen during the winter time though oh yes Woo, berkeley 100% floral coat got my jig back you know these Kander outdoors ice fishing jigs are not cheap I would like to emphasize nothing is really cheap in the market nowadays even the fishing line so when I get snagged needless to say four pound test yeah I want to get my things back you know so I'm going to work out this line tangle over here and we're gonna go back to fishing but man this was lucky <laughs> My father used to say, Leo, you the puzzle master. Damn right, father. I am the puzzle master. I got everything back now. Just need another mealworm and I'm back in the game, son. Actually fascinated. They are everywhere. It's not just here on the right side, right next to the structure. They're around the bridge too. That's crazy. Yeah, look at that. Subtle bite. Yeah, took it. Took it like a champ, man. Holy cow. Wait a moment. That's not that's not a bluegill. That's a crappie. Oh yes. <laughs> this is this is what I'm talking about. Look at that, dude. We got ourselves. A black crappie. Look at that. Beautiful Pomoxis nigromaculatus. We have to take a few shots. Look how beautiful this fish is, huh? The speckles on its body. Did you know that the scientific name of this fish, the species, right? Nigromaculatus means precisely black speckles 
and that's how it came to be the Pomoxis nigromaculatus. Third species of the day. I think we will be able to add quite a few more from this area. I've been here only for 15 minutes. The action is hot. Fall pan fishing, full mode here in this little creek. And like I told you guys, I just want you to realize that I picked this specific spot, right? Because there is a huge piece of structure and I can't show you the 3D lay layout here, but this is a hole, okay? So it's shallow over there, gets deep over here, and then kind of gets shallow again, right? Which is why the fish like to stay in this area. You got to be strategic if you want to catch fish once water temperature goes down. Let me cast right over here. Never know, man. This may just be, they may just be close by. You never know. Oh, look at that. I got a hit already. Fish on. Close by. Close by. It's another golden shiner. Bigger, fatter golden shiner. Goodness gracious. Look at the size of this golden shiner right here. It's good bait. Good cut bait. Good live bait for bigger species of fish. Golden shiner is like good everything. I even have a catch and cook here on the YouTube channel, remember? Where I did a catch and cook golden shiner. You guys remember that? And I ate golden shiner. And they actually tasted good, so no complaints there. Man, that's a good spot actually. Fishing the current, just ready to grab food that passes by. Look at that. Man, I'm casting there, I'm getting bites every every cast sizes may not be quite there yet but that's how you do it over here you need to kind of cool the population down to get to the big ones right another beautiful beautiful little red crappie so underappreciated in this country look at these colors man these patterns it's man this thing's fascinating talking like a damn philosopher today probably because i'm here to de-stress de-stress son you know need to de-stress de right fish damn right Hmm, the fishing is phenomenal, however, the sizes are just not here. Little bluegill, a bunch of golden shiner. So what I'm doing right now is I have just removed my float. And instead of doing suspended jigging, I'm going to kind of jig the bottom with wax worms. I'm tying on now a bigger jig, so heavier tungsten ice fishing jig. And I'm just going to give a few more casts at the spot to see if anything bigger shows up. Let's get a chunky one for this one. Oh yeah, see that? White, plumpy, chunky. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I would like for you guys to notice that even though this jig is heavier than the last one, the shank of the hook is still just as long, right? So just because it added weight, you see? The hook did not get long at all and that is extremely important for this time of the year when it comes to this kind of fishing because as fish get lethargic sometimes they don't strike your bait with the same amount of you know oomph right they kind of just nibble at it so you have to make sure that uh why is it that i'm using ice fishing jigs right you, you have to make sure that the fish actually get to the tip of her hook so that you can hook them got one right here first fish oh that was a best dude i just lost the first fish on the bottom on the new jig and it was a small large mouth bass that would have been a new species for today can you guys believe this that's why i say sometimes man you change just a little bit your presentation your parameters and some new stuff may just show up Wow, bro. Talk about jigging on the bottom, okay? I knew some type of new species was going to show up, but man, this is a tiny, tiny yellow perch, Perca flavicens, and it's highly parasitic too. You see the little black things on its body right here, the black dots? That is not part of its natural pattern, okay? These are actually flat worms. Let's put it in the photo tank and take a few shots though. Wow, brothers and sisters, this is what's up, baby, 
yellow perch. Hey, it ain't about sizes, right? This is a species number four of today. Jigging on the bottom. You see, you see? Fish went right under that piece of structure and it's just slowly swimming back there. You just never know, man. Using this setup right here, I'm gonna give a few more casts. We may just land something really different or a big crappie from this hole. Into the hole! Yeah, man, that's a deep hole right over there. And I got a hit. Instant hit, dude. Ooh, what is that? What is that? Is that a bass? Oh, that's a crappie. That's a crappie. See that? Instant hit on the deep hole over there. Bottom, bottom jigging. Let me wet my hands again because it is a little dry. Bottom jigging again, man. Size is getting a little bit bigger. But it's still nothing like, whoa, you know, phenomenal. I still believe that there's a big crappie in that hole. So I'm just going to keep trying until something actually shows up. Yeah, come on. Don't fake that on YouTube. Don't do that to me. I know you're fine. You were out of the water for like, oh, if I put it in front of him, it will it again? I wonder. No, it won't. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess that fish is not that stupid, you know? <laughs> Well, all right, give it or take. I've been bottom jigging over here for about 25 minutes. And uh, that yellow perch was really the only thing that showed up that was different. And that little largemouth bass that I missed, that it was like, there's probably only one of them around here. So I'm going back to the float. I'm actually running out, believe it or not. This is how hot it has been out here. I'm running out of my wax worms. You guys see, I bought these wax worms at, I think, Petco, and look how many dead ones were in this in this container. This is this is crazy. This is all dead. I can't really use it. So this is a good lesson. If you ever buy your stuff at Petco, make sure you always open the container before you check out. Cause look at this, man. There used to be 15 here, but I'm running out of it. Nice, what we got here? It's just like a big bluegill? Oh yeah, no, this is good, this is good, this is good. Oh, it's just a big bluegill. The big bluegills fight so good, but oh no, dude. Yeah, dude, 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 dude. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Now, now, now we're talking more like bl bl bluegill. Dang, bro. That's why it's was fighting so good. I was like, what is it, you know? Wow, dude. It's like this is like real nice size bluegill for my area, okay? Wow, man. That is crazy. Little creek like this, man, producing all day long. Oh, that was a real bad cast. <laughs> okay. Just because it was bad does not mean we're not going to catch fish, right? Man, what is that? You have got to be kidding me. Dude, no, wait, no, okay, no, no, wait. Okay, that's another sp sp species for today. A bad cast too, oh man. Is smallest fish of the day and the dude is throwing an attitude here in the photo tank before I get shots of it. Can you believe that? Look at that. Like he's entitled and the, like he's the owner, the king of the world, eh? Yeah, right, the green fish. I see what you're doing here, buddy. No, I'm just messing. Let's take a few shots and release this guy. Wow, man, this is, this is intense, you know? Because you guys know here on this channel, extreme fillet fishing only catches the hogs, man, you know? I don't, I don't fish for no largemouth that is not a lunker, boy. I only go, yo, it's big patrol here, dude. We only catch, mmm, top of the crop. Well, this is the fourth species of the day. <laughs> I guess you can say that a natural reproduction is going well over here for the largemouth bass, the Micropterus salmoides. Right, or is that the current? Is that fish? I think that's fish. Holy moly, that's nice fish, dude. 
You have got to be kidding me. Bro. Bro. We're catching some jumbo bluegill in the little creek today. No doubt. Look at the beauty of this winter color bluegill. It's just a bluegill. It's just the Lepomis macrocerus, but it has full winter colors on it. The purple, you guys can see the bars, right? It's got the red here and the black opercular flap. Once water temperatures go down, you guys can see how different, right, the bluegills are. So that's why I always recommend all my subscribers to never identify different fish species by color alone. Is because color is something that really changes depending on environmental factors, you see? How uh, clear or how muddy the water is, right? What is the water temperature? Things like that. So, here. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, bro. Where is that fish going, my man? Where are you going? Please, man. Don't do this to me, okay? He knows, man. He knows. It's like, oh, it's YouTube, yeah? I'm going to be on YouTube, yeah? I'm going to die. No, 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 no. No suicide for you, all right? You go, man. All right, it's gone now. Boy, after that one, I think I am pretty much ready to call it a day. You guys can see the little mound of mud that I made over here for my fishing session today. Make sure I don't fall in the mud and that I could release the fish nicely. Got my 3x5 photo tank over here too to wet my hands when I take photos, take good care of them. When I can, you know, I mean, I try my best to just take good care of the fish, right? If you watch this video from beginning to end, there are really no secrets. Everything that I used is in the description of the video. And sure, I came out, distressed, caught some different species of fish, multi-species, right? Fall, only caught dinks. It was more like quantity over quality. But that does not mean that if you apply the same universal knowledge that you got in this video in your local bodies of water, you are only going to catch dinks, right? If you go somewhere where you know there's cover or structure or a hole during this time of the year and you just put some wax worms and some ice jigs, you may just land some real decent yellow perch. You may just land some big black crappie, right? So I don't know where you are around the country or around the world, but I hope that the knowledge that you got out of this video, this de-stressing video, is going to help you in the future, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It is time for me to go get something to eat and get a little bit happier. I won't say that, you know, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and just be all happy and everything, but fishing definitely helps, you know, when you got a lot going on in your head. So, tight lines, folks. I'll try to bring another video in two days, okay? And take it easy.